All right, everyone. Uh, good still morning. How are you? I hope everyone had a quick tea, a quick break uh, as we continue. Um, I wanted to encourage people to move forward, but I see people are settled and comfortable, so we will carry on. Um, my name is Veronica Thamaini, and I serve within the foundation as the manager of regional programs within the community resources team. This particular session has two parts. Uh, we begin um, speaking about how do we strategically invest in our movement. Um, so for you can as I'll highlight our funding programs, but the core of the session is a discussion I will call, uh, we will have based on the themes we are observing in resourcing the region. And then followed by that, having uh, listened to a number of uh, two organizations, Wikimedia Morocco and Wikimedia South Africa's case study of how do we move towards an outcome-based uh, up, you know, approach when we think of impact. And then after that, uh, bringing in Stefan who will explore more uh, on, in case you can't access resources for various reasons, legal, uh, structural, organizational group, uh, structural reasons, how can a uh, fiscal uh, uh, partner come in. Uh, so that's, that's the plan of our session and I will get started. All right, so um, when we think about um, strategically investing in our movement, we are guided by a few principles. And uh, the first one is around focusing on desired areas of, of impact. We recognize that, and I was speaking with a group of um, communities from the front of our uh, community, recognizing that we still, um, are for, you know, we still approach or think about our funding uh, attached to particular structures of our communities are organized. So there's still the confusion, for example, if I am a, I'm not affiliated, can I access funding? If I don't have a local NGO, can I access funding? And this is to speak to, we're focusing more on what is the impact, what is the change you want to see as the beginning of a conversation around resourcing your work. Resourcing here, moving beyond funding as well. I think we're very keen on, when you talk about resources, everyone is talking about funding, but there's a lot more as we've had across you know, yesterday and many other conversations today morning that we need to expand uh, the term resourcing to think about what can support me when thinking about it, when thinking of resourcing the impact uh, that I desire to see. The other guiding principle is around decentralization, uh, being very intentional around sharing power and especially with the regional focus. So across all our funding programs, there are uh, funding committees uh, with the, to, specifically to the Alliance Fund program and the community fund that is dedicated to resource you as communities. We do have regional funding committees and we do have a number of members uh, participating uh, in, in this conference whose role is to represent communities' voices in important discussions around resource allocation. The other principle is that equity remains central um, to how we fund and especially uh, continue the commitment to resourcing underrepresented communities and groups. And then lastly, uh, focusing, as I said, beyond funding or focusing on issues around uh, capacity building with programs such as the Let's Connect Peer uh, Support Program that came up um, because communities and community members like you shared with us that there needs to be more beyond just grant funding. What if I want to learn or I want to access a toolkit on how to bring together women focusing on a particular issue? Who can I talk to? Who can be my mentor? Who within the foundation can support me with a tool or tech uh, projects? 
Um, so these are the four uh, guiding principles that guide us when we're thinking about resources. So for um, our newcomers, I'll quickly go through the funding programs. Um, um, and we have uh, within uh, community resources four main funding programs. The first one is the community fund, uh, fully dedicated to the, the community. And within this fund, we have the long-term funds called the general support fund. We have the short-term uh, low resource uh, fund um, uh, called the rapid fund. And we do have the funds dedicated to convenience and events called the conference funds. Uh, for anyone who has a question on rapid funds, uh, please speak to Yop, uh, my colleague from community resources. For long-term funds, uh, general support funds, speak to me. For conference grants, uh, feel free to reach out to Yop and myself and we will connect you with our colleague, Hen. Um, Alliance Fund uh, is a fund that we introduced um, now two years. Um, Recognizing that the mission we all share in is ambitious, it's important, but needs more people beyond uh, anyone currently within our movement. Uh, so we do, we you know, created a space to bring in partners. Uh, in this space, we have Moleskine Foundation. Um, yes, yes. Feel free to speak to him about the project Afro Curations that was funded uh, under the Wikimedia Alliance Fund. In your communities, if you recognize there's a partner whose mission the line who would catalyze or accelerate the work that you're doing or open up to new audiences, new fields of uh, ensuring knowledge equity is achieved, let us know. Uh, that currently, for this financial year, we're focusing on. Uh, the two regions, uh, the ECF region and Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, with space for MENA, recognizing that these three regions have had the most uptake of the Alliance Fund. Uh, lastly, uh, the, the other two is the Wikimedia Research Fund that supports individuals, groups, organizations who have identified an area in research uh, that uh, can be supported to bring in new knowledge, new awareness to how we better support our movement, all the projects. And lastly, movement strategy implementation grants. And uh, on the go, uh, you can say one word uh, on movement strategy. Hi, morning everyone. Um, so movement strategy grants have been special in in that you kind of need to understand the goals of movement strategy in the first place. But don't worry, it's not a burden on you. Um, I'll tell you, the journey is a journey that began in 2016 when we came together as a movement to say we need to have shared goals towards uh, shared strategic goals that drive the work that we do in our different um, con on our different continents and in our different spaces. And out of that, those conversations, we now have uh, the principles of movement strategy, knowledge equity, and knowledge as a service to the world. Um, and then, um, how do we deliver that? We have 10 recommendations that are about skills and leadership, that are about how we govern um, within the movement, equity and decision making. That's why you have conversations um, around the movement charter drafting committee, um, and conversations related to hubs. Um, there's innovating in free knowledge, um, ensuring, that the, and also um, recommendations about um, improving on the technology. So there are 10 recommendations and about 47 initiatives. The movement strategy grants enable anyone who is thinking of advancing those initiatives in one way or another. The truth is, everything we do is movement strategy. Um, but they, just as it's strategy, we need to be strategic about the steps that we take towards advancing those goals. So if your project is aligned to a specific initiative um, in a particular way, right now we're more at the research and exploratory phase um, for a lot of the initiatives. So if you're thinking of understanding better what the needs gaps are within your community, if there's some missing research or missing information, 
or knowledge that you know um, exists within our movement but has not been effectively documented, movement strategy grants can encourage that, uh, can support that, or projects that are purely exploratory. You know something is possible, it hasn't been tested, um, and you're not sure if it's possible, you're not sure how best that can happen. Movement strategy grants can support that, not only with the finances, but also with tapping into the non-financial resources that could be available to help flesh out the idea, build it into a project, um, and then <coughs> test it out and learn together. So those are movement strategy uh, grants. Thanks. Um, so looking at uh, what's been now that we know about you know we know about the guiding principles we know about the funding programs that are supported or implement the guiding principles what's been the i would say performance so far in terms of the grants distribution as you can see um, sub-sahara is one two three four from from the top there's been, you know, a tremendous increase in resourcing uh, the region, same for um, the MENA region as well. And overall, when, and, and this leads to a question that we began last year around, we see a huge increase in commitment to funding Africa. What's resulting from it? What can we see out of it? And that's a discussion we will be having. Uh, across all the, the world, we funded last year 381 grants from across 94 countries. Uh, every year, we bring a couple or more new countries, uh, and this is from proactive outreach by the program officers, and sometimes proactive outreach by the community members who tell us there's a new community, I think, where they are, they are ready for more support. And we always say, as you begin your resourcing journey, reach out to us. Because initially, sometimes, and we have seen, it may not be the rapid fund. It may be that you're looking for someone across your border to support you with technical expertise, for example. And while we could facilitate that, a rapid fund may not be the answer to what you currently need. We had a great session yesterday on hubs where we started with talking about what's the need before we look for the service. And sometimes we're very quick to look at the service and we, we you know, need to take more time identifying the need. Um, eight, uh, Twenty-three percent of all grants from last year were made to new uh, first-time uh, grantees. Uh, so it's not for experience grants resources are not for experience. Uh, we can use only all communities. They are for you even as a newcomer. Um, and these were mostly based in Sub-Saharan Africa, taking 40% ECF and Latin America. Um, of you know, um, the budget, uh, when you look at what's the percentage that went to Africa, it's about 16.9%. Again, this speaking to the true commitment of funding the region. A few things have emerged uh, from uh, our observation and data analysis. One, what we've had is there's a desired, uh, continuous desired uh, need to engage with regional funding committees. Uh, people want to understand what's the role of the regional funding committee, how do they, how can they support me beyond saying, you know, this, if we find it at this amount, we won't find at this amount, is there more that can be supported? Um, many funding committees are also starting to think about their role in ongoing strategic movement compositions such as the Movement Charter, the Global Council, so it's, it, Please engage all of us, including the regional funding committees on these compositions as well. Uh, there is a need to focus on outcome-based impact uh, and less of what we are seeing that is very activity-based focus on, on how people evaluate impact. 
it's great to do a lot of, you know, to have volume of work related to activities, but we are encouraging and we'll be hearing from a few, you know, people around how do they think about the question and then what, you know, what, when I do these, what am I hoping to see and how that, does that question then inform the initial program design or even objective design of if at the very end of it all I want to see 50% uh, of the people who came in increase the awareness and the value of uh, our movement, how will I measure that from the very beginning? What am I putting in place from the very beginning? Is the approach I was thinking one-on-one -on -one every weekend or every weekend, pump, one weekend a month, the best approach, or should I have take a TOT approach, for example? So we will hear a few examples that speak to how do we move from being very focused on activities, which is what we see hundreds uh, of activities, and move more towards asking ourselves the questions on outcomes. And I will, in the next slide, I will speak to what are out outcomes. Uh, or our thinking of outcomes. Programmatic focus, we continue to see a lot of work around skill building and moving beyond uh, awareness. So people recognizing, okay, now people know about the development, people know about the projects, but they ha actually have the skills to meaningfully engage with those projects. Um, so a lot of work around weaker skills. Um, there's a lot of conversation, it's an ongoing process uh, amongst organizers around voluntary retention and management as a challenge but also an opportunity to pursue. Internet support, we see more and more communities dedicating a part of their budget to providing data support, local language development, and lastly, a very key, uh, intentional focus on underrepresented communities, whether it's youth, whether it's people speaking a particular language based on gender or subject matter. Uh, more and more groups, especially affiliates, uh, are thinking about developing capacities. Those that we see a lot are on strategic planning, starting to ask themselves the question of, you know, what's our place, what's our role, not only today but tomorrow. Uh, you know, um, there's a practice, uh, especially, I forget in which communities, they always ask the action I, I, I implement or do today, how does it affect the seven generations to come? So we now see more and more affiliates taking time. We have Uganda, Cote d'Ivoire, and others putting this in their plan and saying we need to actually think about what's our role in this community, but what's our role in tomorrow's community. Um, and what, what are we best placed to actually do and do well. We also see interest in uh, organizations taking time to ask themselves, is what we are doing, is it really working? Uh, are we fulfilling the mandate that we step out to, to, to do? So a, a, a lot around impact assessment and sometimes also inviting external expertise to actually support in fulfilling that capacity. Financial management, partnership development, uh, and lastly, groups thinking about uh, healthy governance within their organization. So to today's focus and a discussion for the next 15 minutes uh, um, is rethinking impact towards uh, focusing more on outcomes. And when we think about, sorry, next time. Um, yes, uh, we're looking, and I will share when we talk about outcomes because we talk a lot about it and people will ask, what do you mean by outcomes? What is this that we're looking at? is we have two you know, levels of outcomes. One is what we call cognitive outcomes when you're thinking of what's the attitude or what's the change in knowledge, attitude, behavior. Do you anticipate from your intervention to take place or happen within your participants? Uh, and the other form of outcomes is what action are you hoping when people come from your intervention or your activity for them to actually do perform beyond your, your time and maybe along their participation in your program and all these leading to the changes and in conditions uh, within your communities that you're looking to shift. 
So that's our discussion. But we always say, you know, it's it's easy saying. Maybe let's hear from people who have actually taken this approach. So I will invite. Should we start with South Africa? Uh, Douglas and Bobby, if you want to step up or. Um,
different. They, they, they are interested in the idea of adding articles uh, about indigenous languages online, but the actual editing is quite a, 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 an issue with them. So we take that into consent as well on how we can uh, reach out to them maybe six months after the project is run out to see if we are still continuing with the uh, editing of the articles. Yeah, and that's, that's where the dashboard really comes in handy. And, and there's, there's also a lot to be said for um, personal discipline and when you're running a project, having the discipline to always make sure that you're doing things like collecting the username of the project participants and then always putting them into the dashboard so that you can assess um, both how much they did during the program, but also how much they did maybe six months or a year after the program, or even longer. It's actually quite often very interesting to see what the impact was, you know, three years after the program. Um, I think Bobby is absolutely correct, and it's, it's worth highlighting again the importance of uh, partners and, and working with your partners to figure out uh, where, the, where, where you mission align, where you can both work together and, and understand their interests as well as your own um, to work together to achieve that, right? Um, it's very important before you do that to also make sure that you have got uh, unanimity within your own community about what it is you're doing. So, for example, in the community of South Africa, we've got a very diverse community um, that seeks to represent as many languages as possible. And um, the different language Wikipedias are just in very different spaces, right? And, and so they require different types of support. And like, for example, um, uh, Afrikaans Wikipedia is in, a, is in a place where they really want to, to grow outreach and get more um, uh, students involved in editing. And, and they, they now have a lot of volunteers that are really gearing to go. Whereas uh, a language like uh, uh, Koso Wikipedia um, they need a champion, they just need someone to sort of kickstart the language and uh, language Wikipedia and, and get it growing to, and just, just to start it off. And English language Wikipedia is just it's in a totally different space. Um, and understanding these differences through consultation, through communication with everyone and reaching a compromise is a very important part of it. And, and we found uh, Wikipedia's own philosophy of <coughs> conflict and, and dealing with um, discussions and, and, and reaching compromise to be a very effective mechanism for that. Things like, or is it seem good faith, then uh, these, these very helpful uh, norms to adopt within your communities that are adopting many of Wikipedia's own cultural norms. Uh, one, one thing that I want to say that Dennis is uh, one project that we had in the past, I think, 12 months or two years, is an internship program that we've implemented in the chapter. Um, South Africa has a big gap in the, um, uh, of, of young people that are unemployed. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of young people that are unemployed. And uh, in the charter itself, we do not have, uh, we do not have a lot of uh, women, uh, black women. So what we did was to uh, uh, put in place an intention program. And we were intentional about it, you know. We were hiring black uh, young women and uh, uh, what we wanted to get out of them was, was three things. It was first to give um, previously disadvantaged um, black women from townships, from, from rural areas, employment, because there's no employment in South Africa. And we did that. And then number two, we wanted to activate new users. So we did not want to give uh, um, the potential to already established Wikipedians. We wanted to introduce new people who even did not know anything about Wikipedia, to bring them on board, to introduce them to a world of Wiki. And um, we have seen uh, that, we've noticed that after these people have left, you know, the, the, their internship program has come to an end. They actually continue to edit uh, on, the, on, on the Wiki. And um, number three, we just wanted to, to activate new users, you know, black people black women uh, in, 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 in the chapter you know, to, to raise awareness about Wikipedia uh, on, 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 by bringing black women in the chapter. So, so we have achieved, um, I think, the, the two areas of, 
uh, bringing black women in the chapter, increasing the number of black women in the chapter, and uh, employment, uh, bringing uh, employment or increasing the employment. Um, the, the, the second area that we have been struggling with uh, is uh, the, the uh, activation or the retention. Um, it's an experiment. Uh, we understand uh, because there is no formula for activating a, a, a Wikipedia. Every one of us here has different stories of how they became a Wikipedia. So we find that 50% uh, of those that have left the program have continued to edit, but the other 50%, maybe they, you know, they've not really continued to, 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 to edit. But at least we know that we've activated them. So yeah. Bobby, I just want to finish up on one last thought okay, sure. from my side. Um, but something you said really reminded me of, of what to me is, I suppose, the most important thing of the activities that we as a chapter do, and that is um, build a sense of community. Right? Wikipedia is a community-driven program, it's a project, um, and it needs a, a, a community of people that have shared a common vision, uh, they, might, they don't always have to agree, and in fact, they won't, people won't always agree, but we all agree on what our mission is, free knowledge, you know, the sum of human knowledge freely accessible to everyone everywhere. And um, we have a mechanism of dealing with disagreements when they happen, and then build a stronger sense of community so that we're happier and find more joy out of working together. And I think ultimately that's the number one uh, objective of the chapter. Building, strengthening that community, building that community, and growing that community. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. And one, just to add on the internship program, it's also a different way of um, growing capacity in an organization while still figuring out what specific roles are actually needed. Uh, so it's, it's sometimes when we see and different groups are very different the, the jump or we need someone to fully support for example the chapter or an affiliate or a group but sometimes you're still not sure is this the right role or what is the role in filling um, so taking an internship for example approach to assess for yourself is this really the role okay moving to Morocco um, we have uh, the, pro the program we always talk about, reading Wikipedia in the classroom. Uh, how have you, you know, taken an outcome approach to, to this education uh, focus? Thank you so much, Veronica. So, uh, when, when speaking about grants, uh, at first, Wikipedia Morocco was constituted in 2015, and our activities were mainly lightning activities, edit at dawn, workshops here and there, and there is nothing afterwards. So, then, we tried to, we actually, with the movement strategy, then we gather the community so that we can think of our future as a local community and within the global community. Say. So, and why we organized uh, local gatherings, then we started to be aware of the impact and uh, what, uh, what are the uh, activities or actions that we need to take that can leave impact on us and the other will be attending or participating. So, with the help of the foundation, we were the pilot country to introduce reading Wikipedia in the classroom uh, alongside with uh, Bolivia and Philippines and this was a starter for us to bring uh, uh, something cool to the, to the teachers and also to the students because they know how to deal with Wikipedia but the backstage or, or how this work they are not aware of it so we worked with the foundation at first to implement this as a pilot project uh, and then we scaled up into two next editions with a grant specifically to Wikipedia Morocco and we've hired people who are now staff of our group that, that, that are taking charge of leading the program, of the trainings and also of the follow-up with the teachers after the impact. So for the first edition uh, we had two staff uh, in the independent project and then we've scaled up into four and now we have six staff uh, dealing with education and other things. I will, I will take I will look, I will uh, detail it uh, afterwards. So, uh, the plan for the education in our user group is we want to train uh, teachers on how they will be dealing with Wikipedia in their classroom. 
uh, how the information is, is produced, how the information is shared, how they are, they should introduce it to a classroom city. And to measure the impact, we can see it through the uh, class or course curriculum. So one of the outcomes of this project is they have, they have to produce a course plan that incorporates Wikipedia in it. For example, a geography teacher will bring articles on a specific, specific uh, article on Wikipedia and introduce it in his class. And then he will be using Wikipedia there. And this will be also used in other classes. So this impact can be measured throughout the year. So we can have with them uh, meetings, we can have them on-site on uh, visits, but we can see how they have managed to introduce it in their classroom. Uh, and this was also, as I mentioned earlier, this was a structure for us to build a community. So now we have a community of educators, who are now members of our user group, and we've managed to in incorporate them in our activities. So we have teachers who are fluent in local languages, and they are now editing articles in those languages. So we have uh, languages uh, such as Moroccan Darijan, Moroccan and Arabic. We have teachers who now edit and encourage their, their students to do as well. And we have also teachers who uh, are into photography, they uh, organize photo works, contests, and so on. So this will not only have an impact on them, but also on our uh, group and our community. And also for students, so they can have student clubs, student activities that includes some aspect of Wikipedia or Wikimedia in it. And in terms of growth of our group, so as I said earlier, we were mainly organizing events and, this, and uh, workshops and things like that. And now we scaled into large projects. So we have uh, clear uh, impact measures so that we have to stick, stick uh, on because we yeah, we have a grant, we need to report on the outcomes. So this is, uh, this is for us a motivating element that we can to do more and, uh, and uh, report on what has been done so that we can see that this will be a basis for us to apply for the next grant uh, application. So uh, in the current grant, grant uh, for this year we have an annual plan for 2023. We had projects covering education, uh, documentation, of local languages either through articles or sound uh, and also we have projects like uh, workshops, we have contests uh, not only in Morocco but also in the Arab world for the Arab speaking uh, community and also we have several other projects so the communication, we want to have more outreach so that's why we, have, we brought more people in our user group to, 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 to do this and another thing is that we also have, want to build a tech community so we have uh, started a program, an internship program, and we have Muni really can speak more on it in detail. So we have two interns uh, uh, who are joined us in the summer, and they've, they've done tech uh, activities on how they can generate bots, on how they can, use, or can, they can use their tech solutions to improve the Wikipedia platform um, in local languages, and also the, the, our group, for example, in today's uh, or in, uh, this conference, we have an application for Indaba. So the, throughout, with those those, with those uh, uh, interns and with the help of this tech community, then we can do something like this. And uh, this is uh, uh, for us was a great starter because we have not only specifically working on education, but also we've expanded into more activities. And for the next year or the next three years, we have we have actually applied for a multi-annual fund and we'll be having more activities that are based on this year and we want to duplicate and replicate the, what has been done and achieve more outcomes. So I will let uh, Munir spoke more in detail about the tech projects that are related to our community. Yeah, uh, thank you, Rena. Um, so um, concerning the tech, uh, Community Morocco tech project, um, uh, well, uh, last year basically we were, uh, I mean, I was pretty much just the only person who's, uh, uh, um, for example, um, um, uh, uh, building bots for uh, Wikipedia. And uh, this year we basically scaled up with this project to, to four people. So we had two, two interns. That, uh, one of them was introduced to, to Wikipedia for the first time. So his first interaction was through uh, building up bots uh, for, for Wikipedia. And uh, uh, two others uh, who um, 
essentially, um, we're doing other kinds of tasks, but now they're also doing uh, uh, technical uh, uh, tasks. And uh, our focus was uh, mainly on, on Wikipedia, but also, uh, especially the local Wikipedia, from Morocco, so more Moroccan Arabic Wikipedia, and the Tishik Wikipedia, which is the, the Berber dialect of this region, where we are now. And uh, actually, just uh, recently, the, the standard Amazonian Wikipedia was also approved, uh, so it, it will be launched uh, in a few days. Um, and we will, of course, continue uh, working on it as well. And uh, also on the dictionary. Um, um, uh, so, uh, 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 the idea was to uh, have an independent uh, community of uh, uh, tech people um, who are um, basically able to, to support the, the full the whole, uh, Morocco community with all the technical aspects, uh, updates on uh, uh, that are coming from, from the Wikimedia Foundation itself in, in terms of, of uh, technology infrastructure and also uh, maintaining the, the, all, all the different aspects like the templates, uh, the namespaces, etc. And, uh, um, and as I mentioned also, um, uh, developing bots uh, on other automated tasks on, on the different Wikimedia projects. Thank you. Thank you, Vanir. Um, all, you know, to speak to different uh, approaches to finding uh, or learning what's next and, and why should it should be done. Um, so, I think now we move to Stefan. Uh, and uh, at the very end, the, we, will take, we will take questions. You can have it on your phone or on your computer. 
vous pouvez l'avoir sur votre téléphone ou votre ordinateur. And if you want to know more about it, about use cases and how to put it in classroom, I invite you to listen to Eugene this afternoon at 2. I think it's the same room. Si vous voulez cet après-midi euh, écouter Eugène, il fera une présentation plus concrète sur comment le déployer dans les classes. Et en plus, il y aura des autocollants. He will have stickers. So please do join. Two o'clock. But, I'm here for fiscal sponsorships. Je vais là pour parler des fiscal sponsorships. Je ne suis pas trop bon. Si vous allez sur Wikipédia, if you go to Wikipédia, you'll see bla 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 bla. No. Fiscal sponsorship is accounting. C'est la comptabilité. And you're like, yeah, I know some accounting. Tout le monde connaît un peu de comptabilité. Mais si je vous dis, est-ce que vous pouvez créer un modèle ou un template à partir de rien If I'm asking you, can you create a template from scratch You'll be like, yeah, I, no. That doesn't work like that. So accounting looks you can, like you can do it, but actually you can't. Trust me, I've been trying for years. La comptabilité, c'est compliqué. Vous avez besoin de quelqu'un pour vous aider. Vraiment. C'est important d'avoir tous les reçus et de savoir comment gérer le budget. L'autre mot que je n'ai pas mis euh, ici, c'est banque. The other important word is banking. When you get your grant, you get a bunch of money at the end of the year, it gets converted to CD, dirham, rand, and then what happens is that it gets eaten away by inflation. Quand vous avez votre grant de la fondation, en fait, ce qui se passe, c'est que vous convertissez en monnaie locale et immédiatement, la monnaie, on peut qu'il y ait des problèmes dans le pays, la monnaie se dévalue. So at the end of the year, you started with 100 CD, but you can only buy worth 90 CDs because you know, there was 10% inflation. À la fin de l'année, vous avez acheté, vous aviez reçu 100 dirhams, puis en fait, vous vous rendez compte que vous ne pouvez plus acheter que pour 90 dirhams parce que l'inflation a pris 10%. Donc il faut vraiment prendre euh, l'importance d'être en Suisse, c'est qu'en fait, ça ne bouge pas. Nous, on n'a pas d'inflation. Il y a de l'inflation. Lots of things, but you said that on the move and that is one of them. So what happens? Comment ça marche? Image number one, Bashunda gets a grant. Or you. Bashunda uh, obtient sa, son financement de la fondation. La fondation envoie l'argent. WM sends the money. If I saw a picture of Veronica, um, I'm sorry. No. Uh, but close enough. You run your edit patterns. Vous faites vos programmes, vous faites tout ce que vous avez besoin de faire sur l'année. Et vous nous envoyez la facture. And you send us the bill. And Kiwix will be paying the bill. So you don't have to care about that. You just send the bill and keep the receipts if you need to buy anything. And we'll pay it back. That is the basic principle of this principle session. So the bottom line is, à la fin de l'année, c'est, bon, le, le papier de euh, travail est, est minimum, minimum paperwork. Vous n'avez pas besoin de vous enregistrer, ou si c'est plus dur de vous enregistrer comme ONG et tout ça. C'est nous qui faisons. Kiwix is a non-registered, is a registered non-profit, so the paperwork is on us. So no taxes, for instance, and our revenue. The WMF covers the admin costs, and it covers staff salaries. Um, donc la, la fondation couvre les limites administratives pour nous, mais uh, dans, la, dans le grant, on peut aussi payer vos salaires. The only thing is that you still need to pay your taxes. C'est important de savoir quand même que vous devez payer vos taxes. Voilà pour, uh, pour payer les emplois à votre place. What are the situations where fiscal sponsorship will not work? In what situation does it not work? Your president is called Vladimir Putin, Kim Jong-un, or Ayatollah Khamenei. Là, you are under sanction, you can't do it for you. Enfin, pour non plus. So, if your president sucks, like big time, we can't help you. I'm sorry. Other than that, we're good. Normally, tous les autres cas, on peut toujours s'arranger. C'est jamais toujours super simple, comme je le dis, hein. on peut toujours prendre un autre. Un grand cerf, so. Not always straightforward, but we can work our way around, except those cases. So, who's in? Who did we work for? Ah, uh, just number of people. Why did change? Oh, okay. um, so, African Prime, Migrant Environment, those are only in this region, but we worked also in the Philippines, in India, pretty much all over the place, so we get a good overview of problems. On a vraiment eu, je pense, tous les problèmes possibles. Uh, donc c'est pas aussi simple que ça, mais on est là pour aider. Et finalement, tout s'est bien passé avec eux, tout se passe bien. It's all going well, I think they're happy, when they're still here. So, you know. um, donc on a une expérience et vraiment on peut vous aider. Je pense que si vous avez un, un premier grant, if it's your first grant, 
Or if you know you're going to have issues, it's also a good thing to go, come talk to us. You don't need to take a fiscal sponsor, but we're around and we can talk and I'm always happy to help. And that's it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Merci beaucoup. Si vous avez des questions, venez. Um, so, if you have any questions, anybody has any questions? All right, that was a good presentation. Uh, yes, young lady here. Sure. <laughs> So I'll repeat the question just to make sure that everyone knows it. So you get the money at the end of, at the beginning of the year, and then, as I said, it gets con it gets converted, and then inflation starts in new way of money. So how can we help with that? La question c'était pour sauver l'argent début de l'année, c'est convertir en monnaie locale. Et puis là, c'est pas l'inflation fait son travail. Et à la fin de l'année, vous êtes 10% moins cher, moins riche. Donc comment on peut aider? So we keep the money in Switzerland and we give it on a project basis. So it does not get converted to local currency right away. It stays in the reference currency, mostly US dollars. So it stays at the same level over the years. So if your currency goes down, we actually don't care because you'll get more local money at the end of the year to compensate for that. Donc ce qui se passe, c'est qu'en fait, on garde les sous euh, sur le compte en Suisse. Et ce qui fait que ça touche pas. Vous nous dites, bah voilà, ce mois-ci j'ai tel projet, j'ai besoin de temps, on envoie les sous, on rembourse, mais le reste reste en Suisse. Donc ça touche pas, c'est pas converti en rand ou en dollar, en, en dirham ou autre chose. Donc l'inflation, finalement, l'impact est beaucoup plus faible. Donc ça, c'est ça, on peut dire, on peut gérer cet enjeu. More questions? Yes. Any more questions? Young gentleman with a beard. Oh. Audience first. David? I do actually have a question. Oh. <laughs> so, in, in that slide, when you show it, like, the first step is you get your money, and then you work on the project, and then we, like, and then the bills touch you. I kind of lost the, 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 the logic flow there because let's say I got my money and then I worked on a project. When am I allowed to reach out to you? Is it when my money is like out of range and then I need more? And then I will have to ask you for more? Or do I have to get in touch with you since like from the start of the plan of the project? So if I got this, basically when do we um, interact and when do you get to use your money? Anytime. It's not a one-off discussion where you have a dis uh, decision made in November and then money arrives in January and then you know we speak again at the end of the project. Uh, la question c'est vraiment quand est-ce qu'on interagit? La réponse c'est tout le temps. You run your project. You can tell us in advance. I will need I don't know five thousand dollars for this specific project. Please send it to me. Or you can tell me I run this project and I spent like five oh, well, that's five hundred dollars. Please reimburse. Either way, we're there and we are here to help, so we're really here to make your life easier. La, vraiment, la réponse c'est je vais avoir un projet le mois prochain, donnez-moi 5 000 dollars pour que je puisse réserver la salle, payer les gens, payer les transports et après j'envoie les reçus. Mais vous pouvez aussi dire bah voilà, cette semaine, euh, enfin le mois dernier, j'ai dépensé 500 dollars pour faire mes équitatons, puis j'ai acheté de l'eau et à manger. Est-ce que vous pouvez me rembourser Oui, c'est tout le temps, all the time. It's really your money, so you agree Yes. Just to add, at the point, um, at the point where you're thinking about, I have a, a, a project idea. I always say, let's talk. That's the point where you just say, like, oh, I could do, a raise an idea here. Let's talk. But then we can understand not only about the impact and the outcomes you want to achieve and the activities, but also the other things around and how do you get the resources. So then you can tell us, actually, in my country, this could be eligible as a country, as a country, but then there's a risk as someone receiving foreign money. In some countries we've seen 
you if you get a lot more than a certain bank, your taxes are implicated, or you know, the authorities are now looking at you with a you know, uh, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, so we talk and then we knock on uh, Stefan's door. Stefan said, Yeah, let's do it, and then we, we go. Yeah. And maybe sometime, like we. Uh, Wikimedia Morocco, you already have a partner who, you know, you, you feel like this can be my physical partner. Or for Botswana, uh, South Africa, and South Africa has served with others. So it's, it's the, the thought of do I need a physical partner comes with do I have a project idea? And then we talk about and how will I get the resources. And since we're talking about talking, I think it's important to stress that it's a continuous conversation. La, la conversation doit être constante. Uh, a good example is like, okay, I made a plan to do this activity in this city. Well, the person I was counting on is dead, so I need to change my plans, but I need to move budget. Can I do it? Yes. Si vous vraiment vous avez, en janvier, vous avez un plan pour vos et puis que soudain, bah, il se trouve que ça doit être annulé, vous venez nous voir et puis we totally reallocate this budget to the activity. You can't reallocate budget. You just need to talk. You just need to be very open that plans are changing, and it's very much understood from everyone here that it is normal that plans are changing. So you just need to mention. Yes. Uh, something that something you mentioned uh, triggered me. Uh, you want to say something that I'd like to say every year. Uh, on the subject. Um, so you mentioned accounting and, and keeping track of the funds. Yeah, yes, it's something no one enjoys doing in this year. My wife is an accountant. Yes. Ah! It, it, people who enjoy it are special. Um, She's very special. <laughs> it is. Um, the, and the reason why I say this is because uh, when you are, we know this from experience in South Africa, when you are starting out with your projects, um, People have a tendency to see themselves to believe that they can keep track of all the expenses and make sure that all receipts are kept. And so at the end of the year, everything can be piled you know, into a report, into a fiscal report. Um, try not to do that. Um, it is worth it to get a bookkeeper to help you keep track of expenses. Uh, I, I always like to advocate for people who leave. How would you translate that? I'll translate that because it's super important. Ce que Douglas a expliqué, ce que Douglas a expliqué, c'est que tout le monde se dit oui, oui, bah, je vais garder les reçus, et à la fin de l'année, je vois tout, ça va être propre. En fait. Non, c'est pas une bonne idée. Il faut, déjà, vous, si vous avez quelqu'un qui est doué en comptabilité, vous le mettez au début du projet avec vous, et il vous expliquera qu'on ne garde pas tout pour la fin. Vous le faites au fur et à mesure, vous le faites au fur et à mesure, et comme ça, vous êtes sûr que vous aurez une bonne compta. C'est un enfer. J'ai passé deux Noël d'affilée à faire ma comptabilité à me comprendre que c'est pas une bonne idée de faire un fond. Donc, really, I insist on what Douglas said. You need to do it as you will. Uh, get, get an independent bookkeeper to keep track of your expenses and the receipts and everything. And it will make your life so much easier. It will greatly reduce the risk of financial catastrophe. Um, please, 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 please do that. Any more questions? Bonjour tout le monde, René Villet. J'ai une question. Concernant le sponsor fiscal avec Kiwix, je pense que je pose bien ou bien un quelconque sponsor fiscal. Est-ce que si on a un projet, on n'a on a pas besoin de travailler avec le, le soutien de la fondation, on pourrait passer directement par le sponsor fiscal en termes de validation quoi. So the question was, if you have a project and it works straight with the fiscal sponsor and not with the foundation. La réponse est non. The uh, yeah, short answer is no. Le sponsor fiscal est juste là pour garder votre argent au chaud. Mais tout ce qui est projet, outcome, impact, whatever, c'est euh, à discuter avec la fondation. Nous, on est juste là pour vérifier qu'il y a des reçus. We're just here to keep the receipts and make sure your money is safe. That's it. Bonjour.
Bonjour, moi j'ai deux questions. Euh, je voudrais savoir déjà quels sont les critères pour euh, que vous acceptiez d'être sponsor fiscal et puis est-ce que le, le parrainage fiscal est seulement lié au projet de la Fondation de Québec, au financement de la Fondation de Québec, je veux dire, euh, est-ce que vous acceptez de, de parrainer fiscalement d'autres euh, organisations qui bénéficient d'autres financements autres que ceux de la Fondation Bonne question. So the question was, I forgot the first question. Um, yes. Oh okay. yeah. So what are the criteria to be fiscal fiscally sponsored, and then do we accept um, money from other grant organizations than the foundation? So the criteria are at least for um, Wikimedia grants that you are Wikimedia in good standing. So if you show up out of nowhere and ask for money, it probably won't work. If you had grants in the past and never showed any receipt for them, you're probably not in good standing. So if you're someone serious, and if you don't have enough money, and you haven't done anything, and if you ask for money, you won't have it. And if you've already had a grant, and you haven't received a receipt, you won't have it. So basically, common sense. Four. So there's no criteria, you just need to be someone legit. Do we accept a sponsor? 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 Uh, do we accept grants? Those organizations? Do we accept like, other organizations' grants? We've never done it because we started. We're mostly family, sort of. Um, but yes, we can do it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, accounting is accounting. Numbers don't have any really preference. So we, we have not done, but we have not done it. The question is not posed, in fact. All right. So we have uh, five minutes left. Is there any questions? Okay. So when they prepare their grant proposal, they look at what's important 
for the foundation. So diversity, inclusivity, inclusiveness, um, um, and you know equity. So things that are relevant to the foundation's mission are what are supposed to be relevant in the in the proposal. Aussi, vous tenez compte du budget qui est très important. Voilà, le budget doit être non seulement clair, il doit être également réaliste et il doit être aussi réparti de façon équitable. Voilà, souvent nous avons affaire à des propositions où le budget vraiment, nous voyons que la plus grande part des budgets est alloué euh, soit à l'équipe, à l'allocation de l'équipe ou aux salariés. Et ça, ce n'est pas du tout intéressant. Quand vous voulez demander euh, une subvention, il est conseillé d'allouer la grande partie du budget euh, à la formation. Voilà, et une partie minimum à l'allocation de l'équipe ou des salariés. Ok, the important part in budgeting is that it has to be clear, like very much itemized, and it has to make sense, as in it gets the project running. So most of the budget should go to like training materials and the objective, and not so much like towards, if the majority of the budget goes towards um, salaries, then no, it's not interesting. It needs to be majority of the budget goes to the actual activities. So it needs to be balanced. Okay, pour terminer, je vais donner quelques conseils pour ceux qui désirent effectuer les demandes de subvention. D'abord, si vous êtes nouveau demandeur, euh, je vous conseille de vous entourer de personnes expérimentées, c'est-à-dire des personnes qui ont déjà demandé des fonds. Voilà, c'est ces personnes-là qui pourront vous encadrer et voir les imperfections dans votre demande et vous aider à les améliorer. Sur ce fait, je voudrais euh, dire un grand merci à mon président qui est là, M. Donatien Kanga. Je me rappelle que pour ma première subvention, euh, c'est lui et mon user group qui m'ont aidé vraiment à rédiger la subvention et à effectuer la demande. Donc, euh, c'est le conseil que je donne à tout nouveau demandeur. So, the main piece of advice is that if it is your first time asking for a grant, go see donation. No, I'm kidding. Uh, go, see someone, go see someone who actually has done it before, so that they can give you a reality check on like what is right and wrong with your with your ask. And he says that was really helpful. So, go see donation. <laughs> Alors, tu peux conclure Ok, bon, je vais conclure rapidement. Alors, il faudrait aussi que vous preniez le temps de bien rédiger votre demande, ok Bien rédiger votre demande, avoir des objectifs clairs et précis, et surtout définir une, une stratégie compréhensible qui, vous, qui permettra vraiment au comité d'analyser facilement euh, votre demande. Voilà, j'avais beaucoup d'autres conseils à donner, mais vu que le temps. Et pour, je vais passer le micro à ma collègue et merci. So the conclusion inside is that when you make your, your request, be very clear on what the objectives are, so that the committee that looks at it knows where you're heading and how you'll be evaluated on your results. Okay, in terms of uh, outcome uh, concerning the grant application and um, reviewing the proposals, um, we take cognizance of the uh, outputs and the results from two perspectives. From the perspective of the individual, then when you talk about the individual, you talk about the organizer and the participants. Then you talk about the collective aspect, which is um, the community in general. So you're talking about the participant, then you're talking about the organizer. You ask, ask this question, does this project kind of trigger an interest? Does this project kind of um, instill this sense of um, trying to learn more? This project is this something new that has been made the participants to want to continue further in contributing or maybe discourage them. Okay, also consider the aspect of the organizers because you find out that some projects are quite new and some projects are quite new. So some projects in, uh, involve the participants um, engaging in some training or engaging in some skills that revolves around learning something new so that they'll be able to impact on the participants. Because you cannot give what you don't have. So, that this is the aspect you have to consider in reviewing the project. If it is something that is going to be sustainable, if it's going to be um, productive in not only the, the organizers, but also the participants. Then, when you talk about the collective aspect, which is the community in general, 
Is this project going to retain and sustain the members? Is it going to be an avenue to recruit new members and get more members interested? There's a particular project that may kind of look something like something quite novel and attract new participants. So these are some things that I have to also consider when um, these are something that we have to consider when reviewing a particular application or a particular proposal. These two aspects of it which has to do with the participants, the organizers and the community in general. Then you see that at the end of the day, you see it reflecting on the in the community and in the, on the participants and the other organizers. And these are the uh, criteria we consider in terms of outcome of the projects. Thank you. Okay. Bon, il y a des beaucoup, donc ça va être compliqué de faire, mais... Attends, moi, je dois déjà traduire ce que dit Lucie. Donc, grosso modo, elle a dit qu'il y a deux choses qui sont importantes. C'est, vous devez définir quels sont les objectifs. Est-ce que je vais former des gens Est-ce que je vais former des, des nouveaux contributeurs Est-ce qu euh, est que le plan, c'est de les faire rester C'est d'amener du nouveau matériel, du nouveau contenu Ça, c'est important de définir. Aussi, quand vous faites un projet, plus c'est compliqué, plus vous pouvez montrer que vous êtes capable de gérer un projet compliqué. Alors vous ne pouvez pas juste arriver à dire jamais une fois que j'ai réussi. C'est pas crédible de leur côté et donc il faut montrer que vous avez une expérience. Bon, pas forcément, je veux dire, on commence un jour, mais vraiment montrer que vous savez plus ou moins où vous allez. Alors ça c'est le point. Vas-y, vas-y. Alors, right. uh, so, thank you everyone for attending this uh, session about grants. Uh, and we will move on to the to the next um, uh, presentation about uh, partnerships.